Hi, graphic students. This instruction is going to be an introduction to shafts using the design accelerator tools. In this first example, that's going to be graded. We're going to do a metric profile, standard millimeter dot IAM. We press create. This first shaft that we're going to build is going to involve inserting retaining rings. So the first thing I want to do is place from a content center retaining rings. And I've already done this a couple of times. So to back out, you would have to find shaft parts, circ clips, and then external. We're going to be using this retaining ring for our first example. And everything I'm referencing is in chapter 10 of our text. I press OK. In this example, we're going to have a 20 millimeter shaft. So I select that, and then I'm going to bring two retaining rings into the profile. Press Escape when I have them. From here, I go to the Design Accelerator tab, the Power Transmission feature. Anytime I make any of these selections, for instance, shaft, we will have to save the assembly. So I've already done this a couple of times. I'll make this retaining ring three. Notice that I have a shafts folder already started, and if I went up one level, I'm in my engineering graphics coursework under shafts, and here we are. I save. This will open the shaft component generator, and many of you may have additional dialog boxes that look like this. What you can simply do is X out of all of those extras. For instance, I'll get rid of these retaining ring areas first and just start with a single profile. In this case, my cylinder is 20 by 40. In your screen, it may be different. So I'm going to change the overall cylinder dimensions to meet my screen, 20 by 40. The next thing we need to do is add features. We're not going to add any features to the start or end of the cylinder in this case, but take note of everything that we could. What we're going to do is just add retaining rings. So I'm going to add a retaining ring here. I'm going to go back up and do it again because I have two retaining rings that are going to be involved. Then I will change my retaining ring X distance from three millimeters from the first edge. So it's gonna come three millimeters off the first edge. The second one is gonna come three millimeters off the second edge. Press okay, there they are. Press okay again and again, and the shaft will be generated. The last thing we need to do is assemble this item. I first need to ground the shaft component and then I need to bring these retaining rings in their correct position. A retaining ring is going to prevent that movement, in this case, along the x-axis if something was on that shaft, whether it be a pulley, some type of a ball, etc. I had an old tractor that used retaining rings in its shifting lever. All right, go to the Assemble tab, Constrain, inserts the, the constraint you really want to use here. I'm going to select the inside of that ring, and then if I do the inside of the ring, I gotta make sure I select the inside of the shaft or that retaining ring groove. Zoom out a little bit. Kind of difficult for me to see. There it is. Well, that was wrong. Let's try it again. Constrain, insert, there, and there. Okay, apply. Do the outside this time, outside to outside, apply. Now you'll notice the retaining rings still have a rotational constraint. That's not a big deal because in real life, that would actually still be an available option for those retaining rings. All right, finish that problem up. If you weren't in class today, make sure you show me this work so I can give you a grade. Thank you.